Okay, so hopefully we can end it off on this part. So many people, they are motivated by the wrong reasons. Money is what makes some people move. Like they say, money makes the world go round. So those who trust in the Most High Yahweh, we are thankful every day that he gives us another day to live. Another day to honor his name and to know more of his ways. Those of us that have jobs and we work long hours, a lot of hours, we're able to do what we do because of the Most High Yahweh. He strengthens us. He gives us the spirit to accomplish what we need to do for ourselves and also for Him. So, let's go ahead and read. In Psalms chapter 19 verse 8, The precepts of Yahweh are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of Yahweh are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Just like when you get up in the morning, or you have to get up for work, and the light's in your eyes, right? Well, this is why the Most High Yahweh tells our people to awake, awake. All right, they will see their light. The Most High Yahweh's words are light. The fear of Yahweh is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of Yahweh are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, and keeping them there is great reward. So this is why the Most High Yahweh expects us to continue to follow in His ways, because that's what's going to strengthen us, that's what's going to keep us here. Alright? That's how we're going to be able to uh, resist those seven deadly sins. That's how we're going to be able to fight against those abominations that the Most High Yahweh will hate. Those negative thoughts, which are really demons, okay? These demons that don't want to let you progress. So this is the reason why you need to, you know, pray to the Most High to give you the spirit to get over these things in life. So we're going to read from here, Book of Noah, Chapter 4, talking about the curse of drunkenness. Noah lost his epithet the pious when he began to occupy himself with the growing of the vine. He became a man of the ground, and his first attempt to produce wine at the same time produced the first to drink to excess, the first to utter curses upon his associates, and the first to introduce slavery. This is the way it all came about. Noah found the vine which Adam had taken with him from paradise. When he was driven forth, he tasted the grapes upon it, and finding them platable, he resolved to plant the vine intended. On the selfsame day on which he planted it, it bore fruit. He put it in the wine press, drew off the juice, drank it, became drunken, and was dishonored all on one day. His assistant in the work of cultivating the vine was Satan, who had happened along at the very moment when he was engaged in planting the slip he had found. Satan asked him, What is it thou art planting here? And this is what Noah said, A vineyard. Then Satan said, And what may be the qualities of what it produces? Noah replied, The fruit it bears is sweet, be it dry or moist. It yields wine that rejoices the heart of men. Satan, let us go into partnership in this business of planting a vineyard. Noah agreed. Satan thereupon slaughtered a lamb, and then in succession a lion, a pig, and a monkey. The blood of each, as it was killed, he made it to flow under the vine. Thus he conveyed to Noah what the qualities of wine are. Before man drinks of it, 
he is innocent as a lamb. If he drinks of it moderately, he feels as a strong lion. If he drinks more of it than he can bear, he resembles the pig. And if he drinks to the point of intoxication, then he behaves like a monkey. He dances around, sings, talks unseemly, and knows not what he is doing. This deterred Noah no more than did the example of Adam, whose fall had also been due to wine. For the forbidden fruit had been the grape, with which he had made himself drunk. And so, we're going to go ahead and read this now. If you want to continue to read it, I'll leave it in the description box. And you can uh, read it on your own time. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 29. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaints? Who has needless bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Those who linger over wine who go to sample bowls of mixed wine. Do not gaze at wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. Why? Because again, in the end, it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. Okay? In other words, right? You're gonna basically uh, be mad at yourself. You're gonna become bitter in life. You're gonna become miserable. Why? Well, because you basically put your trust and hope in things that were vain, things that couldn't save you. Okay, that's why it bites like a snake. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 11. But as for you who forsake Yahweh and forget my holy mountain, who spread a table for fortune and fill bowls of mixed wine for destiny, I will destine you for the sword, and all of you will fall in the slaughter. For I called, but you did not answer. Why? Because they were too busy getting that money. You see? I spoke, but you did not listen. Why? Because they were too stubborn. They wanted to do what they wanted to do, right? They wanted to live their life up. You did evil in my sight and chose what displeases me. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Yahweh says. My servants, the sincere brothers and sisters who honor the name of Yahweh, they will eat with nobody to make them afraid. But you... Who want to continue to believe in vain things you who want to continue to worship false gods and worthless idols but you will go hungry my servants who honor the name of the most high how will drink but you will go thirsty my brothers and sisters who love their god Yahweh, will rejoice but you will be put to shame that's the days that we're living in isaiah 66 and 17 those who consecrate and purify themselves to go into the gardens following one who is among those who eat the flesh of pigs rats and other unclean things like monkeys right they will meet their end together with the one they follow and who is that that they following oh satan declares yahweh and I, because of what they have planned and done, am about to come and gather the people of all nations and languages, and they will come and see my glory. Who? Oh, right here tells you. The people of all nations and languages. Alright? So again, it's not about your color. It's not about your race. It's about your spirit. It's about your attitude. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For Yahweh, your God will be with you wherever you go. That goes for all of his servants that honor his name. Proverbs 11 and 23. The desire of the righteous ends only in good, but the hope of the wicked only in wrath. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Why? Because the Most High Yahweh says that when you are giving freely, when you lend to people, that's like lending to God. And therefore, He will reward you. You see that? He will give you double. So again, one person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. 
because that's what the wicked do. They love to go on amassing wealth, only thinking about themselves. That is the reason why it does not go well with them. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. So that is the reason why the brothers and sisters who honor the name of the Most High, those who are continuing to fight every day, those who are continuing to follow in His ways, they are the ones who will be refreshed because why they're getting up every day to share what the Most High Yahweh reveals to them with others. You see that? And it does not matter if anybody listens, but the Most High Yahweh sees what we are doing. He listens to us. That is the reason why He answers our prayers. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. People curse the one who hoards grain, but they pray the most highest blessing on the one who is willing to sell. So this is the reason why the Most High Yahweh, He gives us what we get because this is our grain, right? And we're sharing with the poor, with the hungry. Whoever seeks good finds favor, but evil comes to one who searches for it. So that's what these people do, you know? They want to continue to wait on false saviors. These people want to sacrifice themselves to demons. Well, this is the reason why. It says those who trust in their riches will fall, but the righteous will thrive like a green leaf. This is why it says this here. In Isaiah 32 and 14, the fortress will be abandoned. In other words, people, we're going to be worshiping false gods, calling up the name of false gods, bowing down to wood and stone. This, was, this is what was going to be happening. If you don't believe me, let's go ahead and take a look at this. In Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 39, As for you, people of Yasharel, this is what the sovereign Yahweh says, Go. And serve your idols, every one of you. Right? That's the reason why the Most High Yahweh hid his face from his people. Right? That's the reason why the name of Yahweh was not being known on a large scale as it is now. Because why? Because this was all prophecy. The Most High Yahweh says that he was going to forsake his people. They were going to be worshipping idols. Even unto this day, there's some of our people that call on the name of the Most High and still worship idols. So as for you, people of Yashra, this is what the Sovereign Yahweh says, Go and serve your idols, every one of you. But afterwards, you will surely listen to me, and no longer profane my holy name with your gifts and idols. For on my holy mountain, the high mountain of Yashra, declares the Sovereign Yahweh, there in the land all the people of Yashra will serve me, and there I will accept them. There, I will require your offerings and your choice gifts along with all your holy sacrifices. Okay. It says here, I will accept you as fragrant incense when I bring you out from the nations and gather you from the countries where you have been scattered and I will be proved holy through you in the sight of the nations. Furthermore, then you will know that I am Yahweh when I bring you into the land of Yasharal, the land I had sworn with uplifted hand to give to your ancestors. There you will remember your conduct and all the actions by which you have defiled yourselves and you will loathe yourself for all the evil you have done. You will know that I am Yahweh when I deal with you for my name's sake, and not according to your evil ways and your corrupt practices, you people of Yasharal declares the sovereign Yahweh. You see that? So when you see the Most High Yahweh having compassion on all his people, the, even people that were once worshiping idols and stuff like that, that's what it means. When I deal with you for my name's sake, not because of your evil ways, all right, the Most High Yahweh says that his name is going to be known in these times and in these days. So this is why it says in Isaiah 32 and 14, 
the fortress would be abandoned, the noisy city deserted, citadel and watchtower would become a wasteland forever, the delights of donkeys, a pasture for flocks. In other words, other people were going to be, you know, basically taking everything the Most High Yahweh gave his people. Their inheritance, they were going to be thinking that they were going to be having the Holy Land. They were going to be thinking that they were going to be the ones who were going to be here lasting a thousand years. So it says all that was going to be happening until the Spirit is poured on us from on high. And the desert becomes a fertile field, and the fertile field seems like a forest. Yahweh's justice will dwell in the desert. His righteousness live in the fertile field. Okay, furthermore, the fruit of that righteousness will be peace. Its effect will be quietness and confidence forever. So that's what we have. We have confidence. We have a peace of mind that nobody could take from us. Okay, so that is the only reason why, you know, we go ahead and, uh, do what we do it's not because we're proud it's not because we're trying to prove a point Proverbs 11 and 28 again those who trust in their riches will fall but the righteous will thrive like a green leaf Jeremiah 32 and 41 I will rejoice in doing them good and will assuredly plant them in this land with all my heart and so this is what Yahweh says. As I have brought all this great calamity on this people. What great calamity? Oh, well, you know, the Most High Yahweh tells you about his great army, the locusts that he has sent. Okay. We'll talk about the locusts in another video. We'll go ahead and show the people who are the locusts and the things that the locusts have done. This is why the Most High Yahweh says that he will repay our people for the years, see, the years of the locusts. What do you think the Most High Yahweh says? That our people, right, those who survive, we will rebuild the places long devastated. <laughs> so, this is what Yahweh says, as I have brought all this great calamity on this people, so I will give them all the prosperity I have promised them. Once more, fields will be bought in this land, of which you say, it is a desolate waste without people or animals, for it has been given into the hands of the Babylonians. You see that? Just like we read in Isaiah 32 and 14. The noisy city will be abandoned, the fortress, right? Well, this is the reason why the Most High Yahweh says that He is gathering all peoples of all languages and he will forgive us, all right, for our inequities. Zephaniah 3 and 11. On that day, you, Yara Washlam, will not be put to shame for all the wrongs you have done to me, because I will remove from you your arrogant boasters. Never again will you be haughty on my holy hill. But I will leave within you the meek and humble. The remnant of Yashara will trust in the name of Yahweh. You see that? For in his name we are saved every day. Isaiah 61 and 1. The spirit of the sovereign Yahweh is on me, because Yahweh has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. To proclaim the year of Yahweh's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. Alright? And so with that, peace, blessings, and love to you and your families. Praise Yahweh.